Okay, English to Italian. Ciao e benvenuto a Piacenza. 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 Welcome to Piacenza. You liked that, didn't you? A little bit of Italian to make you feel a little bit more cultured. Um, well, I hope you did like it because there's plenty more where that came from. I'm going to be practicing little bits of Italian throughout, well, throughout the episode, but throughout the series as well, um, just so that I can get the pronunciation right of the players and the teams and that kind of thing, really. Uh, so keep your ears peeled if that's a thing. It's not. But anyway, first off, first thing I've got to let you know which you've probably noticed already, is that this is a longer episode than normal. Well, that's because it's the first episode. It's not all going to be like this. Most episodes are going to be kind of 20 minutes or so. Um, this episode is a little bit longer, but that's because it's the start. And we've got to introduce you to everybody and everything. Um, the club, the players, the tactic, how I've chosen the tactic. There's a lot to go through. So, you know, stick with it. I think it would be best if you don't skip, but look at what I've done here. I've created a table of contents just so that you can find out where the bits you're interested in are and skip to them if you need to. But don't do that because if you skip, I can't think of anything that rhymes with skip. <laughs> also, if you haven't already seen the prologue episode, you need to go back and watch that because that explains the whole of this save. It explains why I'm doing it, why Piacenza, um, and a few of the goals that I've got for this save as well. There are three main goals. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check it out now. Okay, so the rest of you, you've seen it already. So you know goal one was to get Piacenza back in Serie A. Goal two was to run a financially sound football club. And goal three was to create a new bison. And that is... Uh, a striker in the vein of Dario Hubner. And what I mean by that is not necessarily someone who plays like Hubner, but someone who's capable of winning the Capo Cannonieri uh, Serie A Top Scorer Award. Just while we're on that prologue film, I had some really nice comments on the film. So I just want to thank the people that did comment on, on that because um, it's really nice when you get those comments. It, it kind of makes your day when you get a little notification on your phone that somebody's commented on your film. You're like, oh, what's this? In particular, there are a few people, uh, Michelle, I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, who pointed out loads of interesting stuff about Piacenza um, from back in the day and kind of really opened my eyes to a, to a couple of other things that I didn't know about Piacenza. Um, and also we've got Piacenza fans watching as well. Okay, here we are in Serie C slash A. Serie C, hang on, Serie C, how do you say that? I mean, it's Serie, Serie A, isn't it? Like, so let's have a look. Serie C. Serie C. Serie C. Serie C. A. Serie C. A. Piacenza. Serie C. A. It's just what I thought. Here we go. So we're expected to finish seventh, which is okay. Oh, there's some spoilers down here. Don't look at this. That's some signings. Don't look. Cover your, cover your eyes. We have an okay team. I think we have a pretty good team, actually. And I think we can actually do better than seventh. But let's have a quick look at look at Piacenza. So, founded 1919. It's our centenary year. 100 years old, this club. You know, it was meant to be for FM19, wasn't it really? 1919, FM19. See what I mean? Reputation, two and a half stars. National, professional, of course. Squad personality determined. Training facilities are good. Youth facilities are average. Finances are okay. The club is... Estimated value is 245k. That seems like not very much to me at all for a football club. I might go and buy it. Fierce rivals, Cremonese, historic, Milan, historic. Other rivals, Vic Vicenza. Vicenza, Parma, Pavia, Brescia, Torino, Napoli, Mantova. And I'm a bit surprised that Pro Piacenza is not in there because there's another club in Piacenza called Pro Piacenza. In fact, we share the stadium with them. So I'm not quite sure why they're not in there. Perhaps someone knows and can comment in the comments. Arma it's not him, is it? Armando Madonna, not Diego Armando Maradona. Leonardo Garilli, which is the name of the stadium. I had said that pretty well, didn't I? Leonardo Garilli. Who is he? 
Can't find out. Oh, should know really, shouldn't I? This is our stadium. The Leonardo Garilli Stadium. And you need to keep your eye out because <laughs> you've already got your ears peeled. So keep your eyes out for the stadium tour of the Leonardo Garilli uh, Stadium, which will be coming soon. So sorry to flit all over the place, but let's just quickly go back to Serie C A. Because Serie C A is not a normal football league, in my opinion. Let's have a look at this. Serie C is essentially made up of Serie C A, Serie C B, Serie C C. <laughs> Serie C C. Essentially, what I think happens is that the first the first team or the first couple of teams get automatic promotion from each of these subsections of Serie C, Serie C. And then you just have a massive battle royale where all of the teams that are left over play against each other to then become the other teams that go up into Serie B. Serie B? Serie B? Serie B? B? Something like that. So it's quite complicated. The other thing is you're already playing, there's 20 teams in this league, home and away, you're already playing 40 games, plus cup games, plus potentially, I think you can probably play kind of around four or five, maybe even more playoff games if you if you get that far. So having good squad depth is going to be really important. Keeping people fit is going to be really important. It's not going to be easy. Let's have a look at the rules. So there's a couple of things that I want to point out here. One is there's a maximum of fi only 15 over 22 players, which you might think is okay. I found it to be quite difficult and we'll, we'll get onto that when we get onto the squad in a minute. But yeah, a maximum of 15 over 22 players makes it a little bit, a little bit difficult in, in some ways. The other thing is I can't seem to find anywhere any rules about loans. Um, down here, we've got loan rules. Loans must end in a valid transfer window. That's all we've got. But... I can't find anywhere it's saying a rule for the amount of loanies that you're allowed to have. I'm wondering whether there's just no cap on loans at all. This is, and this is the other thing. This is the thing that I love. 12 subs names named, maximum five used. And actually, that's going to really help with the fitness uh, issues that I've just mentioned. But also, I just like making substitutions, so that's quite good. God, it's just going to be a nightmare. Look, qualification. Team in second position qualifies for playoff quarterfinal. Third position for playoff third round. Fourth position, second round. Fifth to tenth qualify for playoff first round. What? Finanza. 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 <laughs> Go on then. Let's have a look at the finances. I don't like to look at the finances because I don't really know what I'm doing with the finances. It's not much you can do it seems in order to turn things around apart from get rid of players or you know cut people's wages get rid of staff that kind of thing and um, what i can see is that we have no debts or loans it seems we have one sponsor which is our main kit sponsor who is worth 375k which according to the information we found out earlier is worth more than our club which doesn't seem to make sense but yeah we we've made a loss this month and um, we're projected to make a loss this season, essentially. If you have a look at the projections here, I don't really know how to how to work this out. But there's a lot of red and there's not much green. So basically, the only thing we've got any control of is the players in the first place and the wages. So if we can get the wages down, get rid of some players, we might be looking a little bit more healthy. Um, but it's not it's not too bad. It could be a lot worse. I've seen a lot worse. We've got no transfer budget. And we've got a big wage budget here, but that's because I've I've played with the sliders there and just put it all towards wages and taken it away from transfer. I think we could have had about, yeah, look, original budget was 2.72k, which is not very much at all. So, yeah, the, the finances are not great, but they're also not absolutely terrible. We're not going to go bankrupt anytime soon, basically. Analysi. Ooh. Analisi. 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 Analysis. Looking at the team report, this is something that I do at the beginning of every save to determine how we're going to play and who's going to play and you know what kind of what what kind of philosophy we're going we're going to use. So this is this team report section is always really a really good place to start. The overview is I always find really interesting. 
uh, squad depth, there's a little bit of squad depth here, but um, also the comparison page, which we'll, we'll come to in a minute. But the overview, there's a couple of things I want to point out straight off. So strengths, let's go into strengths first. Squad is full of leaders and strong characters. Good. That's a good thing. A little bit about some players here, but we'll skip over that because we're going to talk about players in a minute. Impressive crosses. So that's something to bear in mind. In general, we're quite impressive at finishing. Useful. Strong and capable in the tackle. Got good tackle. That's good. Goalkeepers generally dominant in aerial situations. Good at kicking the ball. Goalkeepers are too far from eccentric. Goal so goalkeepers seem okay. And the other thing is, which is very good, very, very useful, the team possess a high level of stamina and also a high level of natural fitness. That's crucial, really, in Serie A. Weaknesses. The main things that stand out really on the weaknesses are balance of zero zero pounds or zero euros it probably should change that to euros actually um balance of zero pounds that was zero pounds is actually zero euros as well in case you didn't know even with brexit so yeah little or no flexibility in the transfer market so we need we need to really think about that could do with more depth at center back could do with depth at right wing back could do with depth on the left wing basically let's have a just quick scan over to this squad depth here there are, there are a few areas of concern so you know, the, the combination of not very good depth plus no transfer budget is not ideal. Uh, it might mean we're going to have to try and bring some people in on a free. Could be that we're looking at loan deals with that we don't have to pay players wages for as well. That's something that we're going to look at. What, what I would usually do is probably have a look at the, the youth team and bring some people in from there. And I have done. I've picked out a couple of people. But as you can see here, another issue, there isn't much to speak of in terms of exciting youth prospects. So that kind of negates that a little bit as well. Having said that, like I said, I can't find anything about how many loan players we're allowed to have. So we might be able to do something there. Any player, another rule for Serie Chi, Serie Chi A is that any player under 20 is eligible to play in any game. So they don't even have to be registered. So if we can find some players that are under 20, we can find them at any point during the season and bring them in. So that, that will be useful as well. And I like bringing young players through. So maybe that's just what we're going to have to do. So the other thing that's really great about this team report section, I always find, is the comparison tab, which basically shows you how you stack up against the other teams in your division, basically. So in Serie A, ah, we are the heaviest team, uh, and we also have the most players unavailable straight off, which is, they're not the two the two things you look for the most, I suppose, when you're looking for an advantage, but... Um, yeah, nevertheless, that is the case. Below average, yeah, fuck that. Let's go to positions. So leadership, really useful, I think, here. Our leadership is the highest in the division, which is very good. We also have quite good first touch above average and quite good passing. So they're all useful things to have. Above, Slightly above average aggression as well. Um, our goalkeepers on the whole look pretty good. Just aerial reach is, is below average. Everything else is either average or more than average. Defense, oh, it's not great, is it? Jumping jumping reach is the lowest. Okay, we've got good acceleration. We've got good tackling, but the rest is pretty weak, actually. Um, midfield, we're stacked in midfield. That's great. Uh, only thing that we're lacking on slightly are decisions there, but look at this. What's this passing? You know, is is, is almost the highest in, in the division. Attack, we do have the highest finishing in the division, and that's you can't get better than that, really, can you? That's brilliant. Physicals, stamina is above average, natural fitness above average, acceleration, all good things to have. What's this? Leadership is the highest. We've already touched on that. These are the mentals. Not amazing. Technical, technically we, we look all right, actually. We've got a couple of things that we're lacking on, but we also have tackling above average, first touch above average. And what's this? Crossing very good. So we touched on that before. Crossing might be something we really need to look into. Wing play, potentially. So some of the things that are standing out to me straight away is that we've got good stamina, good natural fitness. We're good at crossing. So I'm thinking maybe some kind of pressing approach might work, seeing as we've got the fitness for it, combined with perhaps some kind of counter-attacking wing play to get get some crosses in, even though actually our attackers can't jump or head the ball. Oh no, they're good at heading, but just not jumping. Yeah, I think that could work. Squadra e giocatori chiave. Squadra 
Squadra e giocatori chiave. Squadra e gi- <ride> Come on. Squadra e giocatori chiave. Squadra e giocatori chiave. Squadra e giocatori chiave. Squadra e giocatori chiave. That's not bad. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to filter this. So we're going to start off with goalkeepers because they are usually the first player that gets picked. We only have three, which is a little bit of a pain in the bum. We actually only had two when I started here. Let's get the let's sort this by ability so we can have a quick look. We only had two when I started the job. That was this guy, Hermano Fumagalli, Fumagalli, uh, and Tomas Calore, who is on loan. Now, Fumagalli is, is, is the first choice keeper in real life. And he's a good keeper. And he's played quite a few games for us in preseason. And he's done well. And I kind of feel a little bit guilty about the fact that I then went along and <laughs> signed this young guy on loan, Marco Believe. Ble- believe. You better believe it. 22 years old, on loan from Lecce. And he's, he's got very good potential ability. His attributes are good and he's better than Fum- Fumagalli. So I'm going to be giving him a go. He- he's played a few games for us as well and he's done well as well. So they're kind of much of a muchness. Very, very similar actually. Um, but the fact that Marco Believe can still improve and has, you know, a better potential rating uh, means that I will probably go with him just because he has the potential to improve moving forward. Defenders, again, we are sorted by ability at the moment. So when I took over the save, I wanted to pick out who my best players were. One of the players that it seemed was my one of my best players, actually, was this guy, Jacopo Silva. And I'm always looking for things when I'm looking for my best players, looking for quirks about these players that, that can help to shape whatever formation or um, whatever kind of philosophy I decide to play with. And in this case, Jacopo Silva is a natural libero. Now, never played with a libero before. Can we get, does it have a description for libero there? No, we'll have a look at the description for libero in a minute. But Jacopo Silva is a natural libero. So I was really interested to to potentially build the team around him. And that's basically what we've done. We'll get to the tactics in a minute and you can see that. But he has really good attributes for Serie A as a, as a libero. Um, and he can play a libero on support or at, or attack. It's not doesn't make much difference. But essentially what the libero does is he's, he's a defender who looks to, to get forward wherever possible. So here's the actual description for libero. The libero drops behind the defensive line, aiming to sweep up through balls, pick up extra attackers, and make goal-saving tackles, blocks, and interceptions. His exceptional athleticism and reading of the game enable him to cover for defensive errors, take possession of loose balls from a deep position, and secure possession. However, he will also roam forward in support of the midfield when the team has no possession. With a support duty, the libero will step into the midfield when possession is secured and look to play balls through to attacking teammates. With an attack duty, the libero ventures much higher up the pitch to provide a goal-scoring threat from distance alongside looking to play in teammates. So basically, what we're saying there in terms of Jacopo Silva is if he's on an attack, if he's, a, if he's playing attack-minded, he's going to get right up the pitch. Also, alongside Jacopo Silva in central defence, I've been playing this guy, Antonio, Antonio Pergrefi. Practice that one, and you, and you can tell. Central defender, again, he's one of our best defenders. He's just, he's just a beefcake, basically. Winning challenges, throwing himself in there. He's like a classic, hardcore Italian defender. Re- really like this guy. Now, the two players at the top here that I brought in are, let's start off with Davide Batella. Davide, Davide Batella, who has come in on loan from Atlanta, according to this, better than Jacopo Silva and Antonio Pergreffi. Pergreffi, I love saying that. He's already better than them, but he's not going to start ahead of Pergreffi because Pergreffi's got the experience and I like him. I like the way he's been playing pre-season. So he, he's here essentially as cover, but he looks to be a very, very decent player indeed. Only 18 years old is already pretty good. Remember, a lot of my players were over 22 and we have that rule that we we can only have 15 players over 22 and I'd already maxed that out so all of the players that I've had to bring in have had to be under 22. Speaking of which, Edgar Elizalde, Uruguayan on loan from Pescara. This guy is only 18 years old 
But he, again, can play as a libero and is pretty much as good as Jacopo Silva as a libero. So I thought we need a, we need cover in, def- in central defence. But if he can also play as a libero, then that's absolute bonus because if Jacopo Silva gets injured and we're building our whole system around him, we're a little bit screwed. In midfield, so we're sorted by ability again. Simone Della Lata, he has been playing for us. Quite a good player for us and he's been playing as a Mazzala. I don't think he's the best Mazzala, so um, I have brought in some people to potentially play in his position if he starts to underperform, but he's playing okay at the moment, so he's going to stay in the first team. But there are players there that can take over that position if needs be now. Now, this guy, Gianluca Nico, he's been playing, he's been on fire, brilliant as a, I think he's been playing as a box-to-box midfielder for us or a maybe a ball winning midfielder. I think it was a box to box midfielder, but we'll, we'll see in a minute, but I really like him. He, I mean, he's 30 years old, so he's getting on a little bit, but he has 16 stamina and 16 natural fitness. So that's useful for a box to box midfielder or a ball winning midfielder, actually. Alessio Sestu. Now, Alessio Sestu, 34 years old. You see, we've got quite a few old players. We don't have anybody in between. They're either really old or really young, but Alessio Sestu, ideally would play up front as a kind of attacking midfielder or on the right wing. Go on, I'll give you a spoiler. We're not playing wingers, okay? So he's not featured too much for us. We do have an attacking midfielder in the centre there. So he has been stepping into that role and we have been rotating between these players, basically Federto and Sestu. Probably, in fact, one of the comments I had from the la- from the last video was that Sestu is basically Piacenza's best player in real life. So maybe I should reconsider this a little bit. Manolo Portanova. Manolo. Manolo Portanova. Manolo. Manolo Portanova. Barry Manolo. Manolo Portanova. Barry Manolo. Manolo Portanova. Manolo. Okay. Manolo Portanova. Manolo Portanova. Rolling my R's too much. Manolo Portanova, I brought him in. He's on loan from Juventus. He's 18 years old, f- sort of four four star with a black star potential ability. He can go. He he can basically play as a Mazzala cover uh, for Della Lata, which who um, who I spoke about earlier. Although he can pretty much play anywhere in that central midfield area uh, in any role. Sorry, in that central midfield area, passing 15, technique 15, first touch 15. All very good attributes at this level. Pace 15 as well. This guy is a beast and look at him. You don't want to mess with that guy, do you? Look, he's got his little scar on his face there. This is a tough guy. How big is he? Five, oh, he's only 5'9". He looks like he would be about 6'9", doesn't he? 10 stone. Thought he would be bigger than that. Anyway, he looks like a good player um, and he has room to improve. So I'd like to start giving this guy games, but... I'm going to I'm going to be faithful to the midfielders that I've been using throughout preseason and just wait for them to upset me and then they're out. Now, onto the attacking players. Now, Simone Carazza is 27 years old and he's a striker, advanced forward. We've actually got him playing as a pressing forward, I think. He's our he's our top choice striker essentially. He he got a hat-trick in one of the uh, preseason games actually, I think. So but yeah, natural fitness 16, finishing 13, dribbling 12, crossing 12, off the ball 15, which is useful for a striker. He's he's good, you know, sharing the goals with some of the midfield players. But nevertheless, as far as strikers go, he's been our most consistent so far. We have some others to have a look at because obviously we're looking for a new bison. This guy's probably not going to cut it at 27 years old, finishing 13, dribbling 12, crossing 12. But he's not going to be the new Bison, is he? You know, he's not going to make it another two seasons. Well, I don't know, maybe he will, but it's unlikely that he's going to make it another two seasons and become Serie A top scorer. That's, I mean, that's best case scenario, two seasons. It's probably not going to take us two seasons. So what I've done is to find some youth, basically. Here are some of my super amazing signings. Roberto Nunez. Now, Roberto Nunez... I got on a free. He's 22 years old, which, okay, fair enough. He's, he's 22 years old. He's, he, he can still improve. He's not, he's not a 16-year-old or anything, but 
he can still improve. But I like I like the look of this guy. He's very one dimensional. You know, he's a striker and not much else. Advanced forward is his preferred position. You know, poacher is probably quite a good one for him. He can still be improved with a little bit of training, a little bit of mentorship. I think he can he can do okay. He's got a balanced personality, so you know, fine. But 14 dribbling, 14 finishing, 14 first touch. If we can get his passing up a little bit, get his technique up a little bit, and get his composure up a bit as well. But he's got good natural fitness. You know, he's got good stamina. He he could be decent, I reckon. He actually got, um, he scored two in his debut. I've made him number 99, stick a flake in him. Let's hope he's going to go somewhere. So the other the other interesting player is this guy, Nicolo Lizola. Is that how you say it? Let's have a quick look because we want to get this right. Because this could end this could end up being uh, the new Bison. So we want to make sure we can pronounce his name properly. Nicolo Lizola. Nicolo Lizola. Nicolo Lizola. Okay, so Nicolo Lizola. He's actually got quite similar attributes, actually. Although he's 19, so, you know, his, his stamina is not as good. His natural fitness is not as good. But he's still got the same across across here. Dribbling, finishing, first touch, 14. Technique, 13. Off the ball, 13. He's got some decent attributes. Again, he's balanced. It's it's a case of mentoring him again, I think, and, give, and giving him some suitable training so that he can potentially grow into something. I mean, they're only saying he's got three-star ability here. But, again, I don't know. I... I I could see this guy going somewhere. So, who knows? Personale. 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 Persona. Per. per Party. Rolling my ass too much. Personale. Personale. What's interesting here is not much, to be honest. We're kind of um, highest average mental, technical man management in in Serie C uh, in the coaching staff, which is which is brilliant decent all round really but the thing that I really want to show you is this coaching team look who we've managed to grab hold of Dario Hubner we've got Dario Hubner as a coach and can you believe that his attacking is three three how can his attacking be three how can his defending be better than his attacking I mean he's got good determination fine yeah uh, decent adaptability I think FM has dropped a bollock here I mean what the fuck Tattica hmm? Tattica 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 I don't have to do the guy's voice do I Tattica Tattica so here it is this is the tactic Obviously, all based around that libero role that Jacopo Silva plays and that Edgar Elizalde can also play, although he is injured at the moment and out for 11 days to four weeks. So, doesn't matter. He was he was kind of playing alongside him anyway, but we have, we have backup for that, so don't worry about that. Let's get on to the formation. So, we've got three at the back. A little bit risky, maybe, in Serie, Serie C A, maybe, I don't know. The libero is going to going to be moving up into this midfield area here, so we're essentially going to be leaving two at the back a lot of the time. When he's on support, not so much so, but when he's on attack, he'll move forward slightly there. But when he's on attack, because I do switch him around every so often, you're essentially left with these two two defenders just sitting at the back while all your other players are forward. And you'll notice there's a lot of support roles here, and that's because, well, I do play it like that sometimes, but what I'll tend to do is change the some of these to attack every so often, depending on the team we're playing. Sometimes change them to defend, depending on what team we're playing. So, playing with wing backs, so we can get down the wings and get, get the crosses in. We've got a box-to-box midfielder in the centre who can kind of be going up and down, kind of joining in with the defensive needs, be or moving forwards into the more attacking roles. Um, an advanced playmaker sitting behind a pressing forward. And a pressing forward is a position that I haven't, uh, sorry, a role that I haven't used before as well. So I was quite interested to do that. This formation for me really is all about creating something I haven't done before. Um, I love the idea of building it around a libero because I've never used a libero before. But also pressing forward interests me quite a lot. So 
Yeah, it's quite interesting, I think. I'm, I'm interested to see how it works. Anyway, positive mentality. You know me, like to like to be positive, if not overly attacking. But yeah, I like to be positive with this mentality. It can look quite defensive on the face of it, but it's not. I think it is quite an attacking formation. We're doing shorter passing and we're playing out of defence. We're distributing to the centre-backs simply because we want to engage the libero as much as possible. We want the libero to be involved in the play. That's the reason for that, even though we're doing a counter, because you would think maybe we counter down the wings, and maybe maybe we will, but the libero will be the one that starts that play off. Counter-pressing as well, just because we've got the energy levels, we've got the natural fitness to do that, it makes sense to do that. We're defending narrower, and the thinking behind that is that we're going to be leaving some space in the channels here with our with our wing backs and I don't want the defenders to run over and fill that space because we've only got three of them at the back there and the libero might be forward so I don't want to just leave a big gaping hole in the middle so I'd prefer for them to all stay much more central and compact higher lane, line of engagement and we've got get stuck in as well get stuck in probably shouldn't be on there I might I might take that off in fact so we've played all through preseason with this with this formation and preseason, and I don't know if it's a Serie A, Serie A, A thing or not, but basically we had about 15 preseason friendlies booked in. I had to cancel quite a few of them because we also had about two or three cup games in there as well. So, you know, playing a ridiculous amount of games before the season even starts. We ended up playing 10 as it is, and that's including the cup games, which is still quite a lot. But we got a good feel for the formation and for who our best players are. I'm not going to show you who the best players are at the moment because I'm still a little bit unsure and I'm going to save that for the next episode, which will be our first game against Siena. But we should probably have a look at the story so far. Storia fino ad ora. Storia fino ad ora. Ad ora. Storia fino ad ora. Storia fino ad ora. It's not too bad. So this is how pre-season's gone. Ignore that very first game, Carl's Ruhr, because that wasn't me. That happened before I took over for some reason. I don't know why. I took over just before this game. So that's when I set the formation, did all of the stuff that you've just seen, got that formation set up, got all the players in place. I hadn't signed any new players at that point. In fact, I didn't sign anyone new until quite quite far on, until maybe maybe even September. So first game, we won 2-0. Then we beat Carpi 3-2, and that was quite an interesting one because they're actually in the similar division to us. Are they Serie B, I think? Uh, so that was an interesting one because that was the first game against any kind of serious opposition, really. Then we won 2-0. Then we lost 2-0 to Ren Renate, who are a Serie C B team. So again, a little bit of a worry there because that was a team in the same league as us or in the same division as us so it's a little bit a little bit bad to lose 2-0 to them because all of these teams are like Serie D and Chieri are even lower than that hence the 6-1 that was the Italian Cup first first qualifying round so uh, Padova we lost again in that game uh, but then we beat Livorno 2-0 and Livorno as Serie B they went up from our division last season so that was a good win for us big 6-0 win there uh, before a 2-1 defeat to Palermo, who are obviously a bigger team in a higher division than us. What are they in Serie B? Yeah. We did well in that game, actually, to um, to, to lose 2-1. We did well to lose 2-1. No, we did we did well. We played well, um, but it meant that we knocked out of the cup, which is a little bit sad, but when you get drawn against Palermo that early on, you know, shit's going to happen. Pistoiesi, I don't know how you say that, but we'll find out later on in the save probably because they are in our division. We drew 0-0 against them, beat Messina 2-0, beat Campo Basso 2-0. So a good pre-season all in all. Now starts Serie A, A and our first game is against Roba Siena and this will be the next game in the save. So next episode will be this game. A little bit nervy, it's exciting and a little bit scary at the same time. But I'm quite confident in that formation now, so should be good. So there you go, we're all caught up. You now know as much as me. But all that remains is for me to say thank you and to see you next time, and I will say that in Italian, if I can work it out. So... Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Okay, hang on. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta.
Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, ci... Grazie, ci... Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, Grazie ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. What the fuck? It's longer, it's longer, it's longer words, ok. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. Grazie, ci vediamo la prossima volta. That was a good one. I'll see you next time. Thank you.